Remain standing for our response and read it. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, selection number 80. It's right there in your blue hymnal. Right there in the blue hymnal. Selection 80. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Selection 80. As we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., let us rededicate ourselves to his ministry of teaching and his art of demonstrating love, peace, and understanding to the social conditions of, of all humankind. Let us remember and practice his dedication to the strat strategy of nonviolence and his determination to re remain identified as a Christian servant of God. Let us continue, as Dr. King did, to plead the case for nonviolence in our world. We will work for the establishment of the beloved community for which he so eloquently preached despite hearing the ugly discord of hate. Help us, Lord, to continue Dr. King's dream of the bells of freedom ringing out upon our country and justice rolling down like waters. Only then can love rule gently from sea to shining sea in this sweet land of liberty. Let us remain standing for our congregation of him, O oh freedom, O oh freedom, O oh freedom over me.
may be seated in the presence of God. Come on, give God a praise. Before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. Our ushers are getting ready to come. We will gracefully go through our program. Our ushers are getting ready to come to receive our offering. You can't be God's given no matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more you shall receive. Press down, shake it together, and running over. God, I just make ready now for our offering.
a blessing with your name on it. What God has for me, it, oh y'all ain't gonna help me. What, what God has for me, can't nobody take what God has for you. He's got a special blessing with your name on it. Whatever you need, God's got it. Guess what? And he, he's got it and he's waiting. Oh, y'all ain't gonna hurt me. He's waiting to give it to you. We thank God for all that he's done. Thank God. Yeah, all right. We welcome all of our visitors uh, who are here today, who may be a virtual today. We welcome you to the historic Macedonia Church on this, this great weekend as we celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and that, that's a good thing. We, we ought to give God praise for that. We, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome, just, just a few announcements, just a few announcements. Uh, there's so much going on in, in the family of Macedonia and in the lives of our people. Uh, on, on Friday, Friday at, at 6 o'clock, we will celebrate the life, the legacy of Sister Janice on here in Macedonia, here on Friday. On Saturday, we will have a homegoing service for her at 11 o'clock at Newburgh. At Newburgh. We will be at Newburgh on Saturday. We, we solicit that all of our officers and ushers will be in place on Friday and Saturday. All of our officers will be in place on Friday. Saturday. Also, we want to remember our sick and shut in. We have quite a few members that are sick and shut in. We received so many calls on this week uh, of our members being sick, uh, and we definitely want to keep them in prayer. We want to keep Reverend Daniel, Sister Daniels, in prayer as we know that he's from the lines. Uh, his sister on yesterday. Uh, evening. So we want to keep our members in prayers. Uh, the, the devil is trying to steal our joy. But with the help of the Lord, he will give us strength, encouragement, and endurance to run this race. We, we, we pray for our families of Macedonia. Uh, Sister Smart is going to come now. She's going to come and give us a, a brief announcement uh, real quick. She'll tell you, I'm going to tell you, she'll tell you what she's going to say. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to make an announcement about something that's happening in the community. And it's kind of in line with what Dr. King said about working with the oppressed, to, to lift up all oppressed, oppressed peoples. Um, when Jimmy and I were sitting at home during COVID, we had nothing to do. So we were thinking about uh, starting an agency. And we wanted to start an agency that served people who had been previously incarcerated, people who were justice involved. Because we know that when they come back to the community, whether they've been gone 10 days, a month, 30 years, they come back to a situation that is worse than when they left. And um, so uh, we ended up um, partnering with Transition up in Overtown. We're located with them in their offices. And since they see everyone for employment purposes who has been previously incarcerated, that's their job, we see everyone and provide counseling and case management and advocacy services for those people, as well as anyone else who walks through the door. So our agency is called the Empowerment Zone Reentry Initiative. And our, our purpose is to lift up and empower people who have been in the system. And um, we have found that women, the, has in, it has increased, the incarceration of women has multiplied 
in the last 20 years. And you know that women go to prison or jail for different reasons than men do. Women come out and have to deal with different issues than a lot of men do. So most of the services that are out there were developed with men in mind. And oftentimes the women just go home, start dealing with kids and do whatever and, and don't have a chance to really um, improve their lives or have goals that, where they can go in the direction of, they can improve the direction of their lives. So what we're doing is we're having a conference and it's next uh, Monday and Tuesday, not this coming, but next week, the 23rd and 24th. It is just for women. <clears throat> and our purpose is to uplift women in our community, support them, inspire them, let them see what's available to them and follow through and, and be available to help them to create their own plan, their own goals. And so it's going to be a great conference. There uh, are, uh, there's a panel discussion first with, there are all women who have been previously incarcerated. And the, mo the moderator is a woman from Broward who's a lawyer who was previously incarcerated and has had trouble, even with all her education, being able to deal with the barriers in front of her because of her record. Um, beyond that, we're having a wonderful breakfast, a wonderful dinner, full dinner. We're having lots of raffles and giveaways. We're having uh, workshops where we deal with a lot of different issues like trauma and and uh, legal issues and how you can get your records changed, how you can uh, become a, a voter again, all those kinds of things. Dealing with family after incarceration. I mean, we have a lot of a lot of workshops that we're dealing with, and that's the first day. And we're having great keynote speakers as well, all women who have been previously incarcerated. The second day, we're having a speaker in the morning. We're having breakfast. Having a speaker in the morning. We're having a lunch and we're having a resource fair. And right now we have about 40 different agencies signed up for the resource fair to be able to let women know what it is that they have to offer. And so I will be available in the back of the church afterwards if anyone would like to sign up for the conference because everything is totally free. We feel that with everything we've put into it, it's about $400 worth of for each ticket. So everything is free. It's going to be at the Miami Dade Wolfson campus. Miami Dade is giving us everything for free down there, the use of their buildings. And uh, so I just wanted to let everyone know you don't have to be a woman who was incarcerated, but if there are women in your family that you want to get information for, you're welcome to be there. We would love to see you all there. And uh, I just think it's going to be a wonderful thing that I'm hoping we can make an annual thing. And uh, so I'll be in the back. I'll register you on the spot or I'll give you information so you can take out to family members or friends who might be interested. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Please, let's take advantage of all of that information that uh, Sister Smart has to offer and, and her uh, services, please, 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 let's take advantage. Uh, also on today, we'll celebrate our Dr. Martin Luther King Ecumenical Network service will be held today at two o'clock uh, following the service. So pastor gonna preach for five minutes today and uh, we wanna get ready to go over to the Sanctuary of the Arts uh, which is St. Mary's. Some folks say it was, God say it is St. Mary's. You can't take that away, it's St. Mary's. Right. And so, so I must say this as a pastor of Macedonia, that I, I, I'm very aware and cognizant that I have some St. Mary members here. Uh, and, and so I say it very lightly that he, please, Please, if you can't come, come. If you don't desire to come, I definitely understand. Okay, I must say that. I must say that it's going to be a great program. Pastor Bailey's going to act a little bit for about five minutes uh, today, and, and other churches and other pastors will be a part of that great program. Uh, 
please come free food uh, that will start uh, Deacon Perry. Uh, at, at, I believe at 1 o'clock they'll start the food, 1 and 1.30 they'll start eating, and then we'll start the service at 2 and hopefully uh, get ready uh, for the rest of our football afternoon. Y'all are going to talk back to me. So let's let's definitely prepare for that. Uh, and then on tomorrow, we'll celebrate our 5,000 role model uh, breakfast. And the ones who are, uh, who've already paid their $100 to go, uh, it's at the Miami Beach Convention Center. We will meet here. We'll meet here tomorrow morning. Uh, the band will drop us off. We'll meet here at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, if you get here at 9 o'clock, you know we won't be here. We'll be already at the convention center. You can Uber there and then we'll bring you back. So we, we definitely want to uh, support our 5,000 role models and our, as they have their scholarship breakfast honoring Dr. Martin Luther King on tomorrow. Now, for some of y'all who've never seen Ghost in person, y'all don't know who Ghost is from the TV show Power. He's a keynote speaker on tomorrow. So I'm make sure I get a picture with Ghost tomorrow. I don't care what y'all say. And so we, we want to do that. Ray Don's going to come. She's going to give us a selection uh, that's suitable for a quick sermon. But you can see as long as you want to now. That make, that make a sermon in two minutes. And depending on how you see it, she's going to come. She's going to say, And then the next preaching voice you'll hear is none other than he can bear his eyes got big on <laughs>
he can help her just because of her, of who her husband was in the religious community. The widow knew her husband's name had some kind of pull, and she used it to her advantage. She knew her, that her husband was well connected, and she went in faith, believing that Elisha would help her. I want to ask a question today. I want to get into business today. How many of you know that your name can take you a long way? Y'all are going to help me. People will do something for you just because y'all ain't gonna talk about it. Of who you are and what you did in the community, what you did on your job, in your family, and in the church. Can I, can I preach? Now, uh, Tracy, it can be reversed too. Sometimes you might not want to say who you are related to because it just might not be a good idea depending on what it is they did. If y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can't say you related to so-and-so and so-and-so because you might get hit over the head. But the widow was left in such financial bind even though her husband was a godly man, she had been and such a good wife who supported his vision and his goals, and it didn't make any sense. She had to wonder, how could this happen? Have you ever had a moment like that where you wondered, how did this happen? Everything was going good, and now this. And she lost her husband, and now she was going to lose her son. She didn't have a savings account. She didn't have life insurance. She didn't have social security. She couldn't pay her bills. The creditors were going to take her sons so they could work to pay off her debt. This woman is overwhelmed with her finances. And at this point, only a miracle could help her. Anybody ever needed a miracle? Okay, make it just me by myself. You didn't see no way out. You needed a mirror. Have you ever experienced a loss of someone or something that put you in financial trouble? And sometimes you'll say it's not fair and you wonder why it's happening to you when you have been faithful in church and you're such a good person and, and you are such a good wife, a husband, daughter, sister, brother, you were such a good worker. You may ask, why did they leave? Why did I lose my job? Why did I lose my house? Why this had to happen to me? Why did I have to experience this loss? If only my life turned out different. Can I preach today? I want you to know today that, that God has a bigger plan. Even though things aren't going the way you expected it to go. Yes, it's a smoke. It might not see, might seem like a struggle right now, but in the end, you're going to come out like pure gold. God is going to restore your life and give you double. For your trouble. Look at, look at your name and say double for your trouble. He's working everything out for our good. It had to happen. And God's ways are not our ways and thoughts are not our thoughts. These trials are just a testing of our faith. And it is a way for God to show you that He cares for you. Yeah, it, it, it seemed like it becoming harder and harder yeah. to make ends meet in today's economy. I, I preach to myself today. I, our pay is going up, but so is everything else. Yeah. Seemed like when they gave us a raise, gas went up or something. <laughs> Not a head went up. I can't eat but one egg. We got the ration out the eggs. The milk that went up. Yeah. Everybody's arguing about the solution to our debt and our job problems in the United States, but church, if I were you, I would put my trust in God. Amen. 
I don't know what the future is going to bring in a, in a few months, but I do know that God is my provider. He's Jehovah Child. He will give me everything, God. And just like He gave the children of Israel now, I will. Yes, sir. He'll take care of us today. Yes, yeah, we don't have to worry. We shouldn't take any thought for tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Can I preach today? We have to learn how to trust God. We serve a God who owns the cattle on a thousand years. He may not always give us what we want, but he will supply all of our needs. And we can testify today that God supplies all, all maybe I do it myself. He supplied all of our needs. Anybody believe that today? He provides for his feet. The woman was crying. She was crying out to Elisha. But deep down in the inside, she was really crying out to God for help. I don't know what she expected Elisha to do, but she recognized him as someone who was connected to God and someone who could help her. And sometimes when you're going through, it's good to find the people who are connected Say that to God. Say that yeah, they may be able to encourage you, give you advice, or even help you with yes, yes, the situation you're going through. Yes, Psalm, Psalms 1, verse 1 says, Blessed the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Sometimes you need godly advice and reassurance. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. I, I don't know about you, but I, I love being around people who love God like I do. You, you can find strength and encouragement from God who's working through them. The Bible tells us to consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not for sin the assembling of ourselves together. Let me say it again because y'all missed it. Considering one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. It's great to be a part of a group of people who love God just like you. Yeah, yeah oftentimes we get a part of those groups who just stir up, you know what I'm talking about. But the Bible says you ought to be around someone who can stir up love. Y'all ain't going to Let me hurry and get to the truck. It, it's good to come to church not only for the worship and, and the word, but for the fellowship. I know I'm encouraged when I'm around the people of God. I feel like I can go on a little while longer. Anybody else know? When you're around genuine church folks. Elijah asked the widow, what can I do for you? Tell me what do you have in your house? He, he's asking her some question. What do you have for me to work with? He doesn't pull out his wallet to pay her debt. He don't cash out her. He doesn't sell her. But he immediately tries to determine what resources yeah. she has to help yeah. herself. Y'all ain't talking about that. He's willing to help her, but she must first. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. I thought y'all knew that line. What, what are you doing to make your situation better? Sometimes you have the resources to help yourself and you don't even realize. You have to find out what you're good at and make it work for you. Right. Ask your neighbor, ask your neighbor, wake your neighbor up and say, what's in your house? <laughs> yes, what are you doing to help yourself? What are you, your talents? What are your gifts? God is still working miracles, but he wants to know what's in your house that he can work with. 
Yeah, he can take what you are good at and make it work for you. The very thing that you're good at can open up so many doors for you. The Bible says that your gift can make room for you and bring you before great men. But you got to believe in yourself and your ability. You got to believe in yourself. Look at, look at yourself and say, I believe in myself. I believe in myself. Now, if y'all looked at y'all self and did like this, I'm, I'm praying for you. <laughs> you already have what you need inside of you. Do you know who you are? Most of our problem in the church is that we have a problem with trying to figure out who we are. Do you know who you are? You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You are here and not tell. You are above and not believe. The widow tells Elijah, the widow tells Elijah that she has nothing in her house but a jar of oil. And by her response, we can assume that she sold everything in her house because she says that she only had a jar of oil left. The very thing that she couldn't sell or that she probably thought was useless turned out to be the very thing that led her to her miracle. Tell your neighbor, don't underestimate your potential. My God, my God. The widow did all she could do within her power to pay off her debt, but it just wasn't enough. And how many of you have ever been at a point where you have done all that you can do to fix your situation and you needed God to step in and do something miraculous? The songwriter Smokey Corporal said, you needed God not another second, not another minute, not another hour, but I need you, I need you now, I need you right away. There have been times in my life where I have done all I knew to do. I prayed and praised and proclaimed the word of God. I went to church, he even paid my time. I did all I knew to do, but I came to a point where I needed God to fix my situation right away. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, I, I know some of y'all, the older folks can testify to the younger people that God is a provider and that he will make a way out of no way. Yeah, just hold on a little while longer. Yes, yeah, yeah. the widow tells Elijah, tells Elijah that she only has a jar of oil as if it was nothing. But the jar of oil was enough for God to bring deliverance to her. God just needs a little something to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah look at your name and say, he just needs a little something to work with. He'll make something. I, oh, my, y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah, yes, yes. What's in your house? What's in your house? What's in your house that God can work with? Elijah then tells the woman to go and borrow as many empty vessels as she can from her neighbors. And he tells her to go home, close the door behind her and her sons, and pour the oil into the empty vessels. Now this part of the story right here would make anyone question the logic behind the instructions. I probably would have told Elijah, I know you are a man of God and everything, but you want me to borrow empty containers from the neighbors, and then you want me to pour oil from this one jar into all the empty jars. I may as well let the creditors come and get me some. Because you start to sound crazy. My neighbors will think I'm crazy. Well, how many of you know that when you have no other option? 
And when you're desperate, come on, come on. you can't afford to say what you will and won't do. I remember, I remember growing up, and I would tell my mom, I don't want to eat that. And she said, well, when you get hungry enough, I guarantee you, you'll eat with a hook. Y'all ain't been, you ever been there before? When you ain't got nothing but peanut butter, jelly, and some spam, you will eat it if you get home. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you ain't got the spam, you be looking for that window can of beanie weenies and some crackers. Y'all, y'all, oh, y'all, y'all sophisticated now. I forgot all y'all overeat. When you're desperate and when you're in a low place, you will try anything. I guarantee you, if I take the lights and the power out of your house, you will get a battery and try to put it in the house, see if it will light up the whole house if you're desperate. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you, you have to work that job until you get to where you want to be. Yeah. Sometimes you have to live in that little house until you can live where you really want to live. Sometimes you that kind of food until you can get what you, y'all, y'all are talking. Sometimes you have to drive that car until you drive that, that what you really want. If you're faithful over the little things, God will make you lose all of them. In other words, in other words, in other words, you got to appreciate what you do have and God will multiply. Because God Soon as she left Elijah, she went to borrow as many vessels as she could from the neighbors. She didn't care what they thought. Some of y'all wouldn't go to your neighbors for anything. You don't want them all in your business and telling the other neighbors in the whole neighborhood. Yeah, y'all are talking. You know, you know Bailey came to borrow an empty shop. I don't know what he needed for. What are you going to do with it? Can we drop any changes all in three or four months? Y'all know, talk. Y'all know how we do. Y'all be, t- he put on Facebook posts, what the empty job for? And everybody trying to figure out, what are you talking about? So they're going to come in and say, call me, baby. Tell, and you, child, you know, baby, need an empty job. Y'all know how y'all do. Then, then you're going to call so-and-so and so. Hey, guess what so-and-so said? Baby came on in. He needed three empty jobs. But when you want a breakthrough bad enough, and I don't care what nobody said about if I need God to do something for me, I'm talking about me. You can lie on me. I need a breakthrough. Yes, I'm going through. Yes, I'm sick and tired of me. I need the Lord. You can put it on Facebook. Because when God Guess what? While they laughing at you, God blessing you. Oh, yeah. He's opening up the door. He's opening up the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing. Yeah, they laughing at you now, but guess what? When God gets through with you, they gonna be trying to figure out what did you do. You got any more jobs up on? Any, anybody got? Come on now. You gotta be careful how you talk about the ones who you least likely to be. Be careful how you talk about your brother and sister. Gotta be careful 
how you try to keep people underneath you. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 I got it. I'm the head. No, you ain't the head. You just got here before I did. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. If you need it, God to pull the river. I'm getting ready to go to truck tracing. I ain't even going to close this thing today because y'all look at me funny. You cry out to God. You have to be like the woman with the issue of love. You have to press your way through to get what you need. The Bible says that the widow poured the oil to all, watch this, to all the empty vessels. Until there were no more vessels left to fill. Y'all ain't catching yet. And then she went back to give a report to Elijah about the miracle. I believe she may have said something like, I think God did it, wasn't it? Yes, she was able to go sell the oil to pay off her debt. All right. And then live off the rest with her sons. Watch this. She became a businesswoman and an entrepreneur just with a little bit of oil that she had there. Not only did God give her enough to pay off her debts, but he gave her an overflow. God blessed her, but she had to walk out in faith. That's what we call sustaining faith. She was obedient and she was willing to put herself, help herself. He took the little she had in the house, multiplied it. Uh, the old folks say, won't God do it? Yes, yes. I believe that God will do the same for us today, Macedonia. He will bless us with resources we need to live for the rest of our lives. Yes. All you need is faith. The size of must be. Yeah, go go get that degree. Go start that business. Go apply for that job. Yeah. Go get that promotion. Yes. Go get that approval for that mortgage loan. Go fill out that application for college. Go start that nonprofit organization. I'm trying to help somebody. Yeah. Go go get that car. What you need is already in your house. Yeah. You just have to figure out what's in your house that can help you get what God has purposed for your life. Yes. And just like God increased the widow, he's going to increase us today. Yes. God wants to give you what you need. God is sending an overflow in your life today. We speak overflow today. Overflow. Yes. God says, make your request known unto him. He is going to open the windows of heaven for yes. you out of blessing. Y'all don't make me preach oh, yes. But you won't have enough room to receive. Yes, yes. I close today, but I want you to know what you need is already in your house. Yes. It's already in you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All you got to do is come out of your comfort zone. Yes. God already told you what to do. Yes. Now it's time for you to get up and get moving. God wants to bless you. He wants to increase in every area of your life. If somebody needs an increase in finances. Please I do, Lord. Somebody needs an increase in employment opportunities. Somebody needs an increase in their health today. Somebody needs an increase in their hope today. Somebody needs an increase in peace today. Am I helping you? Yes, yes. Somebody needs an increase in strength. Yes, yes. Somebody needs a more faith. I want you to know that God is going to take that look that you have today. He's going to send an increase in the area that you need it today. Get those empty vessels because God is going to multiply what you already have. He's going to give you an overflow. Somebody shout overflow. overflow. Yeah, he, he'll meet your needs. God is a miracle worker. He's able. There's nothing too hard for God. 
I don't know about you, but I need God to fill me up today yes, until I overflow. I hey, anybody want to overflow? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I need him more today. I need him more of his spirit. Yes. I need his glory and power. Yes. Does anybody want God more today? Oh, Guess what? He's filling you up today. Oh, if you believe he'll give you over, he's filling you up right now. Yes, God is not only going to give us what we need, but he's going to give us more than enough. Maybe you had a setback, and God is going to restore what the canker worm has stolen. The devil meant for your harm, but the devil meant for your harm, guess what? God will turn around for your good. You believe that today? Yes, Jesus will supply all of our needs according to his riches that are He'll make a way out of no way. If you put your trust in Jesus, he'll never leave you. Yeah, he's got all power in hand. Anybody believe that today? If you believe it, you ought to shout yes. That's enough. I'm close. They all want to the same The enemy wants to take your house. He wants to take your cars. He wants to take your children. Wants to take your husband, your wife, your peace, your choice, your good health. Don't let him take what you have in your house today. Amen. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Sometimes we go through circumstances in life where we need God to bring us through. Yes, many, many of the times we already have what we need. Amen. We're waiting on a miracle, but what we fail to realize is that we have the resources to get us where we need to be. Yes. Take what you have and add a little bit of faith and watch God Begin to work. Yeah. But you got to put your faith into action. Oh, yes. Faith without words is yeah. God cares for you. He wants to increase what you already have. Whether it's in your health, your finances, your job, your peace, your joy, your marriage, your relationship, your education. Yes, God. We may think that we have what we want to have, but God wants to increase and give you more. Yeah. He will take a little bit yes. and make something great. If you're faithful over a few things, yes, he'll give you more. Yes. Find out what you have in your house and allow God to multiply. Yes, the key to your success lies in you. It's in your house. All of the building, as we open the door of the church, uh, if there's one out of the other safety, he'll give you brand new life. He'll give you life more abundantly. We offer Christ. We offer Christ. The door of the church is now open. The door of the church is now open.
wait to the altar now. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Whatever the problem is, whatever the situation may be, come to the altar, come to the altar, come to the altar. As Elder Trice prepares himself for a prayer, I bring you the mic, Elder, if you want me to. I bring it to you as he prepares for our altar call. He'll give you friends of mine. New life. Like so come. So come. Come on, come on. Come on. To cry. To cry. Let us bow our heads. God of our weary years. God of our silent tears. We come to you today, God. And first of all, we want to thank you right now, Father. We thank you because we realize you've been so good to us, Father. God, we thank you because we realize you never left us, Father. God, we ask that you forgive us, God, for our faith, God. Sometimes our faith is not strong enough in you, and we doubt you sometimes, God. But God, I heard in your word you said that all things work together for the good. Of them who love the Lord and called according to you, their purpose, God. So, God, because of that, God, we look to you today, God. I don't know what your people are standing in need of, God, but I know you are able to supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory, God. And, God, we thank you right now, God. God, each and every heart right now, God. God, we know that you are able to do it right now, God. Be every need right now in the name of Jesus, God. Let not let come to an end of our houses right now, God. God, we heard in the world of how you supply the needs of the widow woman right now, God. So, God, we're walking out on faith right now, God. Yeah, God, it might seem dark to some of us right now, Father. But, God, we know you can do it, God. So, our question is, will you?